YouTube, how you doing? It's Ev from Guy Boston Sports. Welcome back to the channel. We got another good video today. You say that every single time, Ev. We got a video that we got from our community page. Guys, I'm asking all the time, hey, what type of content do you want to see? I'm posting it on the community page and I'm reading the comments. And this one, multiple people asked for. And I think it's a pretty damn good one. It's pretty much just grading every Celtics move that was made this offseason. Now, when I say move, it's got to affect the team this year or got to be something they did. Letting a guy walk like Sam Yojley, letting a guy walk like Evan Fournier, that's not really the Celtics making a move. So those... I don't know. You can you can consider whatever you want to call them, but I'm not considering them moves the Celtics made. The moves that we're going to look into are the new coach, the new GM, trading Kemba Walker in the return, drafting G drafting Juhan Bajigabajigabaga, trading Tristan Thompson in that return, trading Moses Brown, signing Inez Cantor, signing Dennis Schroeder, and then extending Robert Williams and extending Marcus Smart. I just put these together. If I miss something... I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. But I tried. I did a little bit of research here to just try and get a compiled list of what they did this offseason. And as I was doing it, I was going, they've done so much for the NBA world to think that they've had a quiet offseason. That's a bunch of lunatic talk. Before we jump into the grades, I'm going to ask you guys to hit that subscribe button and like this video. And let me know in the comments down below your grades for these. I will copy and paste my grades in the comments so that maybe you guys can just copy and paste and change the grades for you. And before we get into this video, I got to tell you guys about FOCO. FOCO is sponsoring today's video. Guys, all the bobbleheads behind me, those are pretty much coming from FOCO one way or another. They release some awesome stuff. They have the Celtics Hawaiian shirt that I wear. They have the Jason Tatum USA bobble that just came out. I strongly consider you to head over to FOCO.com. Use the affiliate link in the description if you do want to support the channel. Head over to FOCO.com and pick up some awesome sports memorabilia and collectibles. Not just Celtics related. They have officially licensed and exclusive collectibles and memorabilia for every single team in every single sport. So head over to FOCO. Use that affiliate link in the description below. All right, so let's start. Let's start off at the top here. Brad Stevens is the GM. So that whole move, Danny Ainge resigning, Brad Stevens becoming the GM. What am I grading that? When that first happened, I probably, you know, gut reaction was going to say, hey, that's like, a, I don't know, a B. Like, oh, great. I've already soured on Brad Stevens. Now he's going to be running the show. But since we're nearing the end of the offseason... Man, have I come to terms with Brad Stevens as a damn good GM. I'm giving this move an A-. minus, And now that kind of rolls in real quick to the next one, getting a new coach. Ime Udoka, Emi Udoka, the big U, Coach U, whatever we're going to call him. <laughs> that move to me was just a strong A+. Plus. Like, I don't know how you can see that move now and have any gripes or anything but positive things to say about the moves. The way the players talk about him, the way other coaches talk about him, man, this dude seems like the real deal. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown love him. He's been with them on the USA teams. He's a pop product. I'm super, super excited for that. And I do want to say before we go any further in this list, all of these grades are one, either based on my opinion or my expectations, or two, just based on what we know so far. Like, Udoka could go out there and be the world's worst coach. Knock on wood, knock on wood. But as of right now, things are looking up, and that's what I'm basing my grade on. See this coffee right here? This is half full. It's not half empty. So that's how we're looking at them. Maybe we have a little bit of a positive vibe going for some of these things when we really haven't seen it play out. But hey, today's a good day. Let's roll with it. So then the next move I want to talk about, and honestly, I don't even know if I have these in chronological order. My head was spinning trying to map these out and give the grades for them. But trading Kemba Walker, getting Al Holford, getting Moses Brown, what did I make of that? At first, and you guys know I was probably on the side of defending Kemba Walker, but by season's end last year, I was like, man, this dude just doesn't fit. He just does not fit here. So them trading him, I didn't think was like, oh my God, they won the offseason because they traded Kemba Walker. You got rid of a guy that was an all-star a couple years ago, and you brought in Al Horford and Moses Brown. One guy's old, one guy's young and not proven. So I'm giving this trade a B. And that's just sort of saying like, you know, you did what you needed to do. Get rid of Kemba's contract. Get rid of Kemba the player because he clearly his relationship with the team had soured. Bring in... I guess you can say capable players. Al Horford, Moses Brown, I definitely didn't, you know, jump to the moon for that return. Like, we were talking about Kemba Walker for some blockbuster names, which I knew was never going to happen, but that was, like, the word on the street. And then you get Al Horford and Moses Brown. That is a little bit of a letdown, in a sense, just 
looking at it on paper. I'm not saying that's my opinion, but I'm giving it a B here. So a B, sort of just kind of middle of the road. You did what you needed to do, but you know, you're not racing home to show mom and pop a B on the report card. And then again, I don't even know if this is in chronological order. That's the last time I'm going to say it. From now on, if these aren't in chronological order, hey, you're going to live with it, all right? Drafting, Wanhan, Bajaran, Bedrin. That name is going to be the death of me. I'm giving that one a B plus. And this is why I'm gonna say this. He was a second round pick. No one cared about him. No one liked him. He really doesn't matter to the Celtics team. But then you watch him play and he sort of has some flashes of, okay, this dude can ball. Now he's not gonna impact the team this year, maybe next year, who knows? But getting a guy that's sort of, you know, a shouldn't be anything type player and having him flash a little bit, who knows? There's some potential there. Maybe in two years, this dude could actually be an NBA player. And if you didn't see me start a man crush on him when I hadn't seen him before, make sure you go check out his highlights that I reacted to. I had no idea who he was, and I just saw him like throw down on eight guys somehow at the same time in his first highlight, and I was like, who's this dude? But I'm giving that one a B plus just strictly out of potential. Like it, it was a good move to draft him when you look around at all these second round picks and it's like, well, that guy's just a waste of a pick. I strongly think he could be something in two or three years. And you might look back and be like, oh wow, that was a second round pick. And now he's playing some, you know, crucial minutes for the Celtics. We'll see, I could be so off on that one. I think my heart's still patterning a little bit because I was so floored by his highlights, but I, I'm admitting I'm biased. B plus might be strong, but that's what we're rolling with. All right, the next is the Tristan Thompson trade. You got back Chris Dunn, you got back Bruno Fernando. This one's a little tricky for me. So if I gave the Kemba Walker trade a B, right? I have to go a little bit lower with this Tristan Thompson trade, and I'm gonna give it a B minus. You traded them both, let's be completely honest. You traded them both for money reasons, right? You didn't wanna pay Tristan Thompson's contract. You didn't wanna pay Kemba Walker's contract. How can we get guys that really, you know, make more monetary sense for this team? And you got back Chris Dunn and Bruno Fernando, who I quite frankly, continue to forget are on the team maybe they'll surprise me i'm not going to root against them obviously like i got my boys and greens back but that move you know you know al horford's going to play and you know moses brown that they got he ended up being a piece for another guy that's going to play so that kemba walker trade kind of brought in return that you can actually say hey from go these guys are going to play chris dunn and bruno fernando i'm not sure are even going to step foot on the court i hope that they do i do think that they're both pretty unique players but you can't guarantee that either of these guys are going to be crucial players for the team so how can i say that that was a better trade than the kemba walker trade so i'm going b minus there next up this is going to ruffle some feathers this is going to ruffle some damn feathers the moses brown trade for josh richardson guys i'm going a minus here <laughs> i know you guys might not like that i get it people loved moses brown he hadn't even played a dribble for the celtics right the guy hadn't even worn a celtics uniform yet and people loved him but i'm going off the hypothesis that i really think josh richardson is going to be crucial to this team i think he's going to be the third best scorer future video coming on why i believe that but i think he's going to be the third best scorer playing right alongside jason tatum jalen brown and you traded an unproven super young raw guy to get josh richardson like they didn't give up anything when you actually think about it they didn't give up a guy that was instrumental to the celtics moses brown had not even played for the celtics yet so i'm giving this an a minus I know you guys aren't going to like that because so many people were hyped about Moses Brown, and I was too. I made a reaction video on him, and I was like, holy crap, this kid can actually ball, but I just really like the fit for Josh Richardson here in Boston, and I think giving up a guy that hadn't even played for you, I think we should all sleep tight and sleep well at night knowing that that's all you had to give up. You didn't have to give up anything that was real. You gave up potential, and who knows what that was going to turn into, so... You guys can hate on that one, but I really do think Josh Richardson is going to prove a lot of people wrong and some people right this year. All right, so now we got a few more to go. We got the NS Cantor signing. This is, I mean, I, I don't know, a, a C plus maybe. If you throw in the fact that the team needs a big man, needed rebounding, you can maybe bump it up to a B minus, right? But Cantor, we've seen him here. We know that he isn't an absolutely crucial, you know, tool for this team. I do think that he was not utilized the first time around as well as he could have been. But to me, that isn't a, that isn't a signing that moves the needle. Like maybe he's gonna have a couple games where he gets plenty of rebounds and that's great for that game or games. But to me, Enes Cantor isn't any sort of like a, hey, we got Cantor, we won the offseason type of move. So I'm going C plus here. Dennis Schroeder signing. 
Guy wanted 25 million. The guy I honestly believe is worth 20 plus million dollars. And Brad Genius Stevens signs him for six and change. I'm gonna give an A plus to this move here. That Dennis Schroeder signing could be so, so impactful this season. And it's literally his contract's worth like some random gum you find at the bottom of your shoe. Still looks pretty good, so you throw it in your mouth and chew it anyways. It's nothing, it's chump change. This guy wanted 20 plus, $25 million a year, and he got six. You gotta give that grade an A plus, just based on that value. And then the next two extending, Robert Williams and Marcus Smart, I'm roping into the same sort of move here because they were done rather quickly, and I feel the same way about both of them. I'm going B plus for these, and the only reason I'm not super high and super stoked and going into the A range is because you just paid Robert Williams for four years. He hasn't shown that he can be a pretty consistent player for four years yet. You know, he's kind of injury prone and whatnot. And Marcus Smart were coming off of a year in which he really turned a lot of Celtics fans away from him. You know, we're banking on the fact that Marcus Smart now has his money and is comfortable and can go back to how he used to play. And you're banking on Robert Williams being able to stay healthy and contribute to this team night in and night out. Both of those things are kind of like, uh, we're gambling here but I am a fan of the moves. I am willing to take the chance. So I'm gonna rope those two extensions in as a B plus. The last one is extending Josh Richardson for another year. And you guys know I'm high on Josh Richardson. I would just throw this one in as a B, like maybe a B, right? Like I don't think that there's anything, not even an ounce of anything to base your judgment of how to grade this. They went out and got the guy. I think that's the big move, giving him an extra year for some change like, to me, that's just middle of the road and we're gonna go B there. That's what I got for you guys. Let me know if I missed any moves in the comments down below. Like I feel like I did, but I also was scavenging the internet trying to be like, oh, did I miss any? Did I miss any? Look at the Celtics list of moves, yada, yada, yada. I hope I got them all, but I really do hope you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video and let me know your grades in the comments down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.